Hello, I'm James Mills, and you're watching CatX TV. The time is currently 11.30 a.m. in New York, 4.30 p.m. in London, and 12.30 p.m. in Hamilton, Bermuda. Firstly, on this day in 1999, the United States, in accordance with the Torrijos Carter Treaties, officially handed over control of the Panama Canal, putting the strategic waterway into Panamanian hands for the first time. Crowds of Panamanians celebrated the transfer of the 50-mile canal, which links the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, and officially opened when the SS Archon sailed through on August 15, 1914. Since then, over 922,000 ships have used the canal. We have no breaking news today, so we'll go straight to our main news. Israeli Prime Minister... Uh, sorry, we seem to have a, a technical glitch right now. Um. Uh, thank you for that. We had a slight technical issue with one of our monitors, but that seems to have been easily resolved. Now uh, we'll continue with the news. Israeli Prime Minister... Ehud Olmert has rejected international calls for a 48-hour truce in the Gaza Strip to allow in humanitarian aid. After meeting his cabinet, Prime Minister Olmert said conditions were not right for a ceasefire, but he did not rule out one in the future. If conditions will ripen and we think there can be a diplomatic solution, that will ensure a better secur security reality in the South then we will consider it. But at the moment, it's not there. Any ceasefire with Hamas must be permanent, he said, adding that there was international consensus that Palestinian rocket attacks on Israel must stop. Israel has launched airstrikes on Gaza for a fifth day, while more Hamas rockets have landed in southern Israel. The town of Beersheba was hit, the deepest penetration by rockets so far. In the last five days, Israeli jets and attack helicopters have hit Hamas targets, including security compounds, government buildings, smuggling tunnels under the border of Egypt, and homes belonging to militant leaders. Palestinian officials say around 374 Palestinians have died in the Israeli airstrikes. Four Israelis have been ki killed by rockets fired from Gaza, which is under Hamas control. Another story we uh, mentioned yesterday, uh, in Canada, rescue workers have found the bodies of all eight snowmobile riders who were buried under two avalanches in western Canada's Rocky Mountains. The incident, which happened on Sunday near Fernie, British Columbia, followed days of heavy snow in the region. One avalanche buried a group of seven men, Another four went, uh, who went to help were buried by a second slip. Three men managed to pull themselves free. The last of the bodies was soon found after the search resumed yesterday. Early on Monday, rescue workers dropped explosives from a helicopter onto the slopes around the avalanche area to shake loose snow free and make it safe for searchers. Trained teams with dogs then began to search the scene, police said. The three men who pulled themselves from the snow tried to find their companions but had to give up because one was injured and they feared another slide, he said. Mr. Roberts told a news conference that nobody, especially the survivors, was to blame for the accident. Don't blame yourselves, he said. It's an act that happens. Some 27 inches of snow have fallen in the region in recent days. Forecasters had warned that the danger of avalanches remained high hampering the search effort. Meanwhile, in Spain, a car bomb has exploded near the offices of a Basque television station in Bilbao, in northern Spain. The blast happened minutes after the building had been evacuated, following a warning call in the name of the Basque separatist group ETA. Spanish media said there was structural damage to the building, but no casualties have been reported so far. A Basque policeman spokesperson said Wednesday's blast near the Basque radio television offices happened at 5.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time 
and the area around the building had been evacuated and cornered off. The explosion smashed the building's windows and left a thick pile of smoke hanging over the area. The suspects are believed to have commandeered a car because its owner was found tied up in a rural area near Belbeo. And today we have two earthquakes with a magnitude of 5.0 or higher. The first occurred at approximately 6.40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the Kapolawan Talad region of Indonesia. The 5.4 magnitude earthquake occurred at a depth of 75.3 kilometers. We have found no reports of damage nor injury. The second was a 5.2 magnitude earthquake and occurred south of the Fiji Islands at approximately 9.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, we have not been able to find any reference to damage or injury. In Russia, the Russian energy giant Kazprom has claimed the Ukraine is threatening to seize Russian gas transported through pipelines in the country to Europe. Gazprom said the blackmail threat was made after it warned gas supplies to the Ukraine would stop unless its neighbor signed a new contract by the 1st of January 2009. But Kiev insisted that the uninterrupted transportation of Russian gas to Europe was guaranteed. The Ukraine has transferred more than 1.5 billion US dollars, which it owes to Gazprom but the Russian firm said it has not yet received the money from the company Ross Encro, a Switzerland registered gas trading company which is acting as the intermediary. Gazprom says the Ukraine owes more than two billion US dollars including fines. And now we'll go to a commercial break and a word from our sponsors. Every day, the world wakes up and goes to work, pursuing the unique opportunities that lead the global economy forward. The complexity and close connectivity of today's global marketplace is a true modern miracle that can create unparalleled success. But it takes confidence, passion, innovation, and understanding. Enabling opportunity. Protecting capital. Engineering innovation. Investing in your future. Ensuring continuity. Finding the right balance. It takes Aeon. Welcome back. Oil slid down $37 a barrel today, heading for a fall of more than 60% in 2008, as the global economic slowdown uh, bit deep into energy demand. Crude oil hit an all-time high of more than $147 in July, but prices have collapsed in the last six months, as the credit crisis has pushed the industrialized world into recession. Dismal data from the United States yesterday added to pessimism that oil demand would suffer further in 2009, countering any support from Middle East tensions and hopes of another Saudi output cut. Analysts forecast an average of $49 a barrel for U.S. crude in the first quarter and an average of 